Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about how to read a molecule using the ball and stick model on paper. So here I have drawn two of the same molecules. This molecule right here is the exact same as this, but how it is represented usually in a ball and stick model. So why does this one look more filled than this one? I'll explain. So when drawing a ball and stick model for a molecule, we don't add in letters for the carbon or the hydrogens. Why? Because there's so many carbons and hydrogens that are composed of in a molecule that it just clutters the whole page. So therefore we make it simple and clean. How do you know which one's carbon and which one is hydrogen? I'll explain. Every time you come to a point like right here, 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 and even here, even though I wrote the C, that represents carbons. So right here, you can see that this says C for carbon. And even this one's supposed to be C for carbon. So we know these are carbons because they are a point. And attached to each carbon is going to be the however many hydrogens are also going to be attached. So attached to each carbon is most likely a hydrogen if the bonds are not already filled. Carbon has four electrons that can create bonds. So right now we have two bonds on this carbon. So therefore, that means there's two other bonds that need to be formed, or that is formed, and that is with hydrogen. So if you know that a molecule has more bonds than what is presented on the page, just know that they're bonded to hydrogen. It's just not written there. So again, carbon has four bonds that it can make, and it has one, two that's written on the page, and the remaining two are hydrogen. So again, this one has two hydrogens, hydrogen, hydrogen. And this one, so this one has one, this one has one, two, three bonds. So therefore it only has one bond, hydrogen bond to it. This one has two, and this one has two. And this one has a double bond and a single bond. Therefore it has three bonds bonded to it, and therefore it only has one hydrogen bound to it. So, if it isn't a carbon or a hydrogen, you will see the other molecules present in the diagram. So therefore we have this oxygen right here. And if there was gonna be any other, like a nitrile group or a carboxyl group or any other molecule or functional group that's bonded to this molecule, you will see it. You will see the abbreviation for it. It won't just be in stick form, okay? So let's give another example. Let's fill in this example. Like we said, at each point, that is a carbon. So this is a carbon, this is a carbon, this one's a carbon, this one is a carbon, this is a carbon, this is a carbon, and even this is a carbon. It is a point. This, we'll get into later, is a methyl group because it has three hydrogens bonded to it. Why does it have three hydrogens bonded to it? Because it's already bonded to one other carbon, so therefore it has three other bonds that it can make, which is hydrogens. And we see this, it's CH3, which is called a carboxyl, or sorry, which is called a methyl group. Okay, so this has two hydrogens it's bonded to. This one has two, again, because they already are bounded to other two uh, carbons, so therefore the remaining two bonds are with hydrogen. And again, this one, so does this one have a hydrogen bonded to it? No. Why? Because all the bonds, all four of the bonds are taken up. One, two, three, four. This one has two. And again, this is a methyl group, so it has three. Let's do one more example. Okay. For this example, we have a carbon right here, carbon right here, carbon right here, there, 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 and there. Okay, real quick, answer in the comments, what makes this carbon. How do we know these are carbons? I'll wait. Okay, so what makes these carbons are the pointed ends, or the pointed or in the intersections of the lines that meet. So this is a pointed end, and this is the intersection of two lines. So therefore, these are carbons. Okay, now let's add the respective hydrogens.
Okay? So, again, how do we know that this has three hydrogens attached to it? Because it only has one bond. So therefore, the remaining bonds that aren't shown on the diagram are going to be hydrogens. Same with this one, and the same with this one. How do you know this one doesn't have any hydrogens? Because the four bonds are already taken up for this carbon. And these two have only two bonds that are with carbons, and they therefore they have two hydrogens bonded to them. This one has three bonds that are two carbon, so therefore it has one hydrogen. So let's review. As we know, the ballistic model will only come in forms of lines. We see these lines and think, what is this telling me? Well, as we reviewed before, every point on these lines, or every intersection, equals a carbon. So we know this is a carbon, this is a carbon, this is a carbon, this one is a carbon, this one is a carbon. And each carbon can only have four bonds. So we look at to see on the model what, how many bonds are already formed. Okay, so for this carbon, we know there's only one bond formed. So whatever is remaining bonds that need to be formed, it is already formed with the existing hydrogen. We just don't write it on the model. So again, this one has two bonds to different carbons. Therefore, there's two hydrogens present. Same with this one and this one. And this one has three. So again, that is the ball and stick model. If y'all have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and tune in for more.